Bonjour à toutes et à tous et bienvenue dans En coulisses. Ce mois-ci, je vous accueille dans la maison de Lise et Chad. Cette maison s'appelle Tartine Bakery. Nous sommes ici dans le bar Tartine, leur restaurant. I'm really happy to welcome uh, Lise, Lise Pruette. Yes. Willing to present us um, a wonderful recipe, something exclusive for us. Oh yeah, you're and the, mostly you're the only guests. ones who have this. Yes. <laughs> Valrona, that's right. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to let uh, Lise to present the recipe and then we'll just going back at the end for the tasting. Very good. You are the chef, Lise. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> so today we're going to make a buckwheat chiffon cake. We're going to make the buckwheat layers first. And here I have buckwheat flour, pastry flour, uh, half of my sugar in the recipe, and my baking powder, and uh, a little bit of salt. So we're going to sift this mixture. Right into the, your big bowl. And we'll stop right there. The buckwheat flour is very fine, actually, so it goes through quickly, and it also makes a bit of dust. We're going to make a well in the center where we're going to mix in our wet ingredients. So here we have our milk. You're going to separate your eggs. First, we're going to mix in our yolks and oil. This oil that I'm using today is grapeseed oil. I'm going to whisk this together. We're going to pour it all at once into the well and the flour. And we're going to whisk this until it's nice and smooth. Now, unlike most cakes and pastries, you don't have to worry too much about developing the gluten in this, partly because we're dealing with two flours that have very low gluten. The buckwheat, in fact, doesn't have gluten in it. And you're also mixing in three very uh, high fat substances, the milk, the egg yolks, and the oil. So you want to get that nice and smooth. There you are. So now we're going to go over and whip the whites with the sugar and the salt. You'll start with just the salt and the whites, and you're going to whip them so they're medium peaks. So once the whites start getting frothy, we'll put a little bit of the sugar in, let the volume develop. And you really want to see medium peaks form before you add the rest of the sugar. So now I'm going to just let this whip until you get very shiny, smooth, stiff peaks. Okay, you really want to see very smooth, shiny peaks. That looks good. We're going to bring this back to our flour mixture. We're going to quickly mix this first third in. Add another third. the rest of it. You can see this is a really fast cake to make. It's uh, very, very similar to Genoise in some ways, but it has more sugar, and that's going to make it seem a bit more uh, moist in a way. So here we have our mixture already with the egg whites mixed in. It's nice and smooth. We're working quickly so it doesn't deflate. And we're going to put this into the pastry bag and pipe onto the sheet tray to make the cake layers. Okay, so now we're ready to pipe our cake layers. I have my sheet tray here already with the silk hat and underneath I've put the cake rounds to give me a guide. You can also scoop this on and spread it with an offset spatula. It's up to you. It's going to spread a little bit. So that looks just about perfect for one. And that's going to even out perfectly and be just the right size. So you're going to do five of those on each tray. You want 10 layers. OK, so while the cake layers are baking, we're going to make the creme anglaise. 
I've had my mixture of cream and milk cold infusing with uh, Earl Grey tea bags. And so we're going to start by taking the bags out. And you want to squeeze the rest of that tea. We heat up the mixture just until it's steaming. Then here I've got my yolks, sugar, and salt. I'm going to mix these together. quickly. And you just want to make sure the bottom of this doesn't stick or start to burn. And we can keep whisking our yolks and sugar. And we're just going to let this come up to temperature. Okay, I feel like it's just about to start simmering. I can see the steam coming off the top. So I'm going to mix a small amount of this into my yolk mixture to temper it. And I'm going to pour the whole thing back into this pot. Okay, I can just start feeling it getting thick now. So you can see it's become frothy on top and it hasn't boiled. You don't want to see maybe just a couple of bubbles, but not more than that. And right from here, we're going to pour it through. So this way you're going to get a little bit of cooked egg, but also I see some uh, stray pieces of tea and you'll be sure to get some of those too. And there you are. Okay, so our cake layers are out and cooling. Uh, we've made our creme anglaise. We're about to make the ganache with the anglaise now. I've actually had these uh, fev by the oven, so they're a little soft. And I'm using the P125 Côte de Guanaja. And I'm going to put first a third in of my warm anglaise. Get this mixing. It's going to be pretty stiff in the beginning because it's not much liquid. Another third. I'm going to make sure that your creme anglaise is at the right temperature. If it's been cooling off, I would recommend warming it up a bit before you start. After the last addition, you'll see it comes together really nicely and smoothly. You'll get a perfect emulsion this way. You can see right here is the moment where you feel like it's not going to work out. And then suddenly it becomes your beautiful ganache. Now you can use a burr mixer at this point as well. We usually do. Just to make sure it's perfectly smooth. Okay. So let's... And we're going to end up with a ganache that's ready to use right away. Perfect. So we have our ganache all ready to go and our components here ready to assemble. I do have some apricot jam that we made. Combined it with some uh, candied kumquats. We sliced them about a quarter to an eighth inch thick and uh, do a really simple quick candy, maybe about 15-20 minutes in simple syrup. And we fold those into the jam. Uh, the jam we also make at the bakery and it's simply uh, about a ratio of one part of sugar to one part uh, of fruit. And for about every two pounds or so, or kilo of uh, fruit, you wanna add the juice of one lemon. In this case, we also added a little vouvray. So we're gonna start layering. With our layers, I've got the paper on the bottom to start. I've prepared my mold with a thin sheet of plastic that rises just a little bit above the edge of the pan. And we're going to moisten each layer with a little simple syrup. And the simple syrup has been infused with uh, fresh bergamot. And this again is just uh, about a one to one ratio of sugar to water. And you just need a little bit of it because as we were saying, the chiffon is already pretty moist. Then we're going to start with the ganache.
You're just gonna do very thin layers of each. This is a 10 layer cake. Just use a little offset spatula and spread it just about out to the edge. Next layer. Press it down gently and moisten. And then this layer, we're going to be adding the jam mixture. There we are. Jam's a little bit chunky. So you do want to make sure that when you add your kumquats, that those are sliced nice and thin. Now when you portion out your jam, you just want to make sure that you use the right amount for each layer. So just take a look in your bowl and divide that into uh, four and the next layer. So you're just going to keep layering all 10. Cake, moisten, chocolate, cake, moisten, and the jam. OK, so here we have our finished cake. We have 10 layers. I'm going to top it just with some simple cocoa powder. Normally, I would chill it three or four hours first before I put the top layer of ganache on. But if you put the ganache on, you can chill it, and it'll be ready to cocoa powder and turn out as well. It doesn't matter. Just a very thin layer. And you're done. And there's your cake. OK, so we're all set. Our cake is crystallized. The ganache is nice and set. I heard the ganache and is crystallized. Yes, the ganache is crystallized, so it's ready to eat. Ready to eat. Would you like to do the honors? Oh, yes. OK. Can I do? Be my guest. Yes. It's, it should be very nice, um, the mix of flavor. Mm -hmm. You spoke about bergamot. Bergamot, apricot, apricot kumquat. Kumquat. Mm -hmm. A little um, vouvre. Yes. <laughs> And the, the, cold, the cold infusion is quite very interesting because we don't have any bitterness from the tea, just the flavor, no? Exactly. That's it? Exactly. Uh -huh. You should really do a cold infusion and take the time. So. Oh, we can see the wonderful layers. I should do well. Oh, we are feeling the very smooth biscuit. Yes, it's a nice feeling and it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful cake. It's really worth taking the time to make all the layers. Yeah. And that's it. And normally, ladies and gentlemen, dun, da, da, da. that's right. There you are. It's beautiful. It's very nice, huh? Mm hmm Lady first. And that's Thank it. Very much. It's looking so, so smooth. Mm. It's delicious. The emulsion of the ganache, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Very nice texture, very creamy. And it's very low power sugar. I love that. Yeah, very yeah. low sugar. Yep, just a little from the jam. And I saw you to put just a little bit of syrup, but not many mm -hmm. syrup. No, not much. It doesn't need just a whole lot. Just to give wet. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Isn't it? Thanks a lot for uh, today. You're welcome. A great pleasure to, to discovering this wonderful recipe. Well, the pleasure was ours. Thank you so much. Eh bien, cette recette, vous la découvrirez sur le site de Valrona TV avec les détails, les explications. Et moi, je vous dis à très bientôt pour un autre en coulisses, ailleurs, une autre histoire de la gourmandise. Au revoir. Au revoir.